Mr. Beat presents Presidential, Presidential Elections in American, American History. The 25th presidential election in American history took place on November 4, 1884. Chester Arthur had become president after the assassination of James Garfield. His health had been declining, though, and he honestly didn't know if he would make it another term if he ran for re-election. Still, a lot of people wanted him to run, so he gave it a try. James Blaine, the former Speaker of the House and Senator from Maine, was the favorite for the Republican nomination, but George Edmonds, a senator from Vermont, also had a good chance to win it. Two notable people that many wanted to run were Civil War General William Tecumseh Sherman and Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, who at this time was the Secretary of War. Both Sherman and Lincoln strongly did not want to run for president, no matter how much people tried to talk them into it. Ultimately, the Republicans went with a name that many already recognized throughout the country, James Blaine. He was nominated, with John Logan, a senator from Illinois, as his running mate. The Democratic Party chose Grover Cleveland, the governor of New York, who was known as a man of integrity who spent much of his career fighting political corruption. So I don't know why the heck they nominated him. The Democratic Party went with a familiar face for Cleveland's running mate, Thomas Hendricks, the former governor of Indiana who ran for vice president on the ticket with Samuel Tilden back in 1876. Remember that one? He won. I mean, he lost that one, but was back for another try, this time with a different classical liberal. There were several third parties this election. The Greenback Party was back for a third try, hoping to gain even more momentum. They nominated Benjamin Butler, the former governor of Massachusetts, with Absalom West, a plantation owner and former Confederate general from Mississippi, as his running mate. Talk about odd couple. Another political party that was continuing to pick up momentum and continuing to hate alcohol was the Prohibition Party. This time they nominated John St. John. That's his actual name and that's his actual mustache. A former governor of Kansas with William Daniel as his running mate. A lawyer and politician, go figure, from Maryland. The second notable woman to run for president, Belva Ann Lockwood, ran with the Equal Rights Party. The former teacher, teacher? and principal was the first female to appear on actual ballots. So that's pretty cool. Yep, she still didn't stand a chance. Activist Marietta Stowe was her running mate. The two top candidates were personally attacked leading up to this election. Blaine for being accused of using his influence for special favors, and Cleveland for allegedly fathering an illegitimate child. And here are the results. Grover Cleveland won, becoming the 22nd president in American history. He received 219 electoral votes, and James Blaine received 182 electoral votes. But this is a little deceiving, as the election was a lot closer than this. In fact, if it weren't for Cleveland barely winning his home state of New York by just over 1,000 votes, he would have lost this election. New York had 36 electoral votes up for grabs, and thanks to our lovely electoral college, Cleveland got all of them. It was a narrow popular vote overall, with Cleveland winning 48.9% and Blaine winning 48.3%. John St. John and his mustache finished third with 1.5% of the popular vote, and Benjamin Butler finished fourth with 1.3% of the popular vote. All other nominees got less than 1%. Thomas Hendricks became the 21st vice president in American history. Cleveland's victory broke the longest losing streak for any major political party in American history which was six consecutive elections. As matter of fact, and this is a spoiler alert, Cleveland was the only Democratic president between 1861 and 1913. I'll see you for the next election, buddy.